I have one to be put it that's going to be chapter number 3 the video number 1 of grade 10 science and this is going to be a brand new chapter as per the Sri Lankan government school syllabus we are going to learn about structure of matter and we will talk about matters we will talk about matters today If you're going to a supermarket and if you want to buy certain matters you look around like this Now you have I have a question to ask from you if you want to buy certain things like these like you can't buy electricity sunlight sound like this inside a bottle can you buy these things inside the bottle no you can't i took you to my garage and there are so many things that occupies the space and it has a mass or oh, weight for it if you touch that one and if you weigh that one you can feel it those all has a common name let us see that i'm taking you to that page the things in our environment can be classified into two main categories as number one matter and the next category is energy those that occupy space and have a mass a cold matter we were learning these things when we were in grade 6 7 8 9 10 up to now now the table or the chair it's called as a matter because it is occupying the space and also it got a mass now when we are talking about electricity electricity has no mass and it does not occupy space that is definitely called as electricity now i have a question to ask from you let's see what is that question when you are roaming around this ground the air if somebody is telling the air is energy now i have a question air definitely has a volume the balloon it's inside the air is there and also it is occupying the space right so the my question is coming to you you have to comment now is air energy or matter is air energy or matter you want to find out that and you want to answer that question down in the comment below now the classification of matter according to their physical nature and chemical composition is shown in the following chart we are going to see that one what is that matter classification as per the physical nature and as per the chemical composition now let's dig deep that one now the matter when you are talking about the first classification coming according to physical nature as we have learned it many times that as per the physical nature we can divide that one into gas liquid and solid now the next one is about the chemical composition you will remember this one as per the chemical composition we can divide that one into pure substances and mixtures now pure substances also we can divide into element and compounds and then mixture you can divide that one into homogeneous and heterogeneous now this is the ex- explanation for the element now element if you see hydrogen hydrogen it has hydrogen a molecule of hydrogen and element a molecule of oxygen o2 h2 now it's coming together o2 and h2 it is forming a compound like h2o or it is forming as carbon oxygen one carbon and two oxygen comes together and forming carbon dioxide so the water is a compound and carbon dioxide which we are exhaling is definitely a compound but we are inhaling oxygen that is definitely an element now there are elements in environment like iron oxygen copper nitrogen but compounds will come joined together two elements like water h2o and carbon dioxide as we discussed now then in the mixture when we are talking about homogeneous salt solution and sugar solutions comes as the homogeneous now heterogeneous we can talk about lime plus water and rice and sand lime plus water and rice and sand we will talk about it later stage but you know that these are the classification so we came to know about it and definitely matter cal- classifications now physical nature and chemical composition under the physical nature solid liquid and gas under the chemical composition element and compounds and homogeneous and heterogeneous 
Yes. So we have to learn something else also. What is that? It's about atoms. Atoms are the building unit of matter. The matters are made out of atoms. That's the starting point. If there is a table, there are a lot of atoms in that table. And in the chair also, there are a lot of atoms. So somebody had found out that one for us. Now, the atom is composed of subatomic particles. Oh my goodness. So that atom has some other particles inside also. And that also we have to learn. The atom composed of some subatomic particles as well. Now, among them, what are the subatomic particles we are going to find out? There is something called protons that is in the maroon color. And electrons are there just like that. And neutrons that is also over there. They are the main subatomic particles. So what are the subatomic particles? Protons, electrons and neutrons. That you understood now. Let's see. The electron is a negatively charged particles. Electron has a charge of negative charge minus and proton has positive charge in the center. Now while neutrons have no charges, electron is has negative and proton has a positive charge. P is proton, P, P proton is plus. You can just remember that one with that word. Proton has a positive charge. P P. And definitely electron has negative and neutron has no charge. It's neutral. With the identification that particles called electrons, protons and neutrons constitute matter and as a result of the efforts taken to describe how those particles are organized in matter, the atomic model was introduced. According to the nuclear model put forward by the gentleman in the picture called Ernest Rutherford in 1911, he had made a big effort inside the laboratory just like that. We have to find out further about certain things. If this is the atom, if this is the atom, what is inside the atom? There is a very small area called nucleus at the center of the atom. So inside the atom, there is a very small area called nucleus at the center of the atom, in the, in the center of the atom. Now, do you know what is the size of an atom? Yes, the size of the atom is very tiny as it's very difficult to find out even in the laboratory using machineries like this. Now, if the atom is a football crown, just like you are watching now, the nucleus, the size of the nucleus is a small volume. Now, we are telling that the atom is that football crown and you are throwing a chickpea or a peanut. Can anybody find that? It's so small, right? Now, it is exactly like that. A nucleus at its center from this example. It is clear that the nucleus of an atom is very small relative to an atom. Wow. So, you find out that one. Protons and neutrons are accumulated in the nucleus. Now, protons are where? Protons and nucleus. A neutron is inside the nucleus. Proton and neutron is inside the nucleus. Now we have something to learn. The nucleus is small, okay fine, dense region at the center of the atom. It consists of positive protons and neutral neutrons. So that means nucleus has positive proton and the neutron has no charge. So it should be positive, right? That is right. So it has an overall positive charge. So the strong nuclear force holds together protons and neutrons in the nucleus and overcome the electric force of repulsion between protons. So why this nucleus is positively charged? You have to definitely get an idea. The nucleus is positively charged because it has proton inside and neutron is neutral and it is very strong. Now, electron is revolving around the nucleus. Electron is revolving around what? nucleus that exactly right now as in the picture remember that the number of electrons in an atom is always equal to the number of proton the number of electron in an atom is equal to the number of proton e is equal to p also you have to find out this one why the atom is electrically neutral why the atom is electrically neutral inside an atom we found out there are subatomic particles as electrons protons and neutrons yes 
and inside the nucleus you can find protons and what else neutrons and also we also find out that nucleus is positively charged now we are telling that the atom is electrically neutral right however the protons and electrons are oppositely charged that is right therefore the atom is electrically neutral so however the protons and electron has op are oppositely charged therefore the atom is electrically what neutral yes electron minus is equal to proton plus that is why it is electrically neutral now my question remains as it is unanswered is air energy or matter prove it is air energy or matter prove it let's identify and let's discuss further about that in our next video lessons also until then bye bye and take care of yourself